Hi! Isn't it remarkable how Thinless dies give us delicate and detailed die cuts, like with the new Stampin' Up! Springtime Impressions Thinless dies? Well, today I'm going to share my tips with you on how to use these same dies to emboss your cardstock using the Sizzix embossing mat. Wait until you see how I stepped up the Thinless Embossed cardstock for a gorgeous Abstract Impressions card. I'm Shelley Godby, the owner and CEO of Stamping Smiles, and for 17 years I've been teaching others how to create their own hand stamp smiles. So for those that have never seen a demonstration with Thinless dies, we'll start with die cutting and then use the same dies to emboss our cardstock. Here's a closer view of the Springtime Impressions Thinless dies. Look at that gorgeous detail. Oh, wait until you see it die cut and embossed. And it coordinates with the Abstract Impressions stamp set. So when you order the two of these together using the special bundle item number I've listed right here, you'll save 10% on both. So we're going to go ahead and start with die cutting. Before I grab my Big Shot, let's do this. So I have here some soft seafoam cardstock. This is a new color and I just can't leave it alone. Love it. But you see all that intricate detail? After it's die cut, it'd be a little fussy trying to use adhesive. So instead, before we die cut, I have a piece here of the multi-purpose adhesive sheets. So we'll go ahead and peel this off. This is the backing. We'll get rid of that. And we'll put this right on here and we'll make our own self-adhesive die cut when we're done. Look at that. Fantastic. I've got my Big Shot die cutting machine, so now we need to build what's called a sandwich to cut with our Springtime Impressions Thinlets dies. So we'll start with the Big Shot platform, and then because we're using the thin metal die, we need the thin die adapter. This is just going to make it a little bit thicker for that thin die. And then I could use a cutting plate, but instead I'm going to use the precision base plate. This is a wonderful. This is an additional purchase to the Big Shop, but one I highly recommend if you're die cutting with the thin lits dies. It cuts through them cleanly and neatly. So that writing side, that goes down. There we go. And then our next part of the sandwich is our soft seafoam cardstock with the multi-purpose adhesive sheet on the back. So place that on there. And then our big die that is oh so pretty. Look at that. So that raised edge, that goes down. Okay. And you know what I'm going to do, because I'm not using the magnetic platform, because it's recommended not to use the magnetic platform with the precision base plate. I'm going to take just a little bit of washi tape and hold this in place because I, I need it to make sure it doesn't shift on me when it goes through. There we go. And then you can use the washi tape again, and you'll see that. We'll do that. So we'll just a little bit there. Okay, let me grab another piece. Or you could use a post-it note. I've used painter's tape. I didn't get that piece very big, but I think we're looking pretty good there. Okay, and then the rest of our sandwich is a cutting pad. So we'll just go ahead and crank this through. And it is tight, so we're putting 3,000 pounds of pressure on that, and all the intricate is being cut. So whenever I do this, I always back up and run it through a second time for good measure. Okay, so let's have a look at how well this die cut through. And remember, we're also cutting through that multi-purpose adhesive sheet. Look at that. That's just a beautiful thing. And so now we'll need to clean that off. Let me move my Big Shot and grab my Big Shot die brush. Okay, so we'll place this on here and just gently roll this over top. And all these little pieces then fall out and it prevents you from having to, I probably won't get every one of them, but without this I would be poking every little one of them out with my um, paper piercing tool. So look at all that's left on there. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take this off. I want to keep that washi tape on there because we're going to use it again in just a minute. But look at that. That precision base plate is really just an awesome purchase. Oh, that went with it. And uh, for what didn't come off, I can do this. Or there's so little left. We'll just take and poke them out. 
So next we're going to use this same die and for embossing our cardstock. Our sandwich is different when embossing with the thin list dies. So first we start with the Big Shot platform and what I'm doing is following the instructions that come with the purchase of the Big Shot embossing mats. So you have pictures down here and then the guide is up here. So I don't know about you but it seems like every year the writing gets smaller and smaller so you may want to write this out. And I'll have the sandwich uh, with the video so you can just copy and paste it. <laughs> All right. So we start with the Big Shot platform and then a cutting pad and then it tells us our die cutting side up so because i really want this to be quite precise i'm going to use washi tape to hold it in place like we did before there we go with my paper and then so the die is facing up and then the next part is a single sheet of cardstock and it didn't just say paper it made sure it said single sheet so try only try to emboss one sheet at a time and then we need the thin silicone rubber mat there we go and it even says blue because there are two there's the thin and the thick and they're noticeably different and this one's gray but it says the blue there we go so we're building up our sandwich and then the impressions pad it even says white <laughs> there we go so now as i crank this through you can tell the pressure is a lot different than when die cutting because we don't want to cut we just want to emboss and so let's go ahead and, and back up for good measure just like i do with the die cutting and you almost think it's not doing anything because the pressure is so light so let's take all this apart and look i thought okay pretty good i wish it was better so what i did was i thought hmm I made a shim and so I have a sheet here of the pineapple punch cardstock. Now every big shot is calibrated differently. You may get awesome results without needing to shim. For me this made a big difference. So then I have another sheet of the soft sea foam but I do need my cutting pad. So let's go ahead and put that down and place this on here. So cutting side down right for the cardstock but now we've got cutting side up like the instructions and then our single sheet of paper there we go our thin silicone rubber mat in blue our white impressions pad and so now when I crank it through I mean, it's still going through really easily, but I can just feel the little bit of difference that that single sheet of cardstock for a shim made. So now let's look and see what we got. Because the goal is to get a great embossed image without cutting through. Oh yeah, that's better. So you'll want to play around and see, like I said, try it first without a shim, but if, if you want, an even deeper in um, image like I just got try a, a shim all right I cannot wait to show you what I do with this uh, garden impressions embossed cardstock for a fabulous oh it's just a gorgeous abstract impressions card so I had this gorgeous embossed cardstock and then I thought okay let's finish our card I thought ooh it'd be really pretty to add that butterfly in a lot of color and then I decided to try something I thought what would happen if I place the die cut that we did right over top of it? Well, oh goodness, look at how all the embossing fills it in. Here it is, um, put down with mini glue dots so it's nice and tight. Isn't that gorgeous? Like, oh my goodness, all of that depth and dimension and the intricate die cut crazy about this. I think it's really cool that we can emboss, but this is making me oh so happy. And so then of course you're just never happy. You know, you just you're creating, you want to keep going. I thought, hmm, what would happen if I colored the cardstock first? So here we go. I have one die cut in Whisper White. And so we're going to quickly add some color. So I've got the soft sea foam crazy about this color if the cardstock is sold out i apologize because i can't leave it alone <laughs> so here the new pads you just flip it up and slide it in how about that so i'm going to use a sponge dauber put it on the tip of my finger 
and just what they call load your brush, run it across. And so let's go ahead and hit the leaves. Whoops, that's a flower. That'll be okay. <laughs> and uh, give us, it'll give us a variety of color. How about that? Look at that. It's already getting pretty. This, oh, this bundle, if you saw my other videos, this is my favorite bundle <laughs> in the new catalog. And like I said, that's a tall order because this, the 1819 Stampin' Up! catalog is so incredible. To try to pick a favorite is virtually impossible. I mean, it's not even a fair question for most people. So it's like, okay, maybe your top 10, that'd be a little bit more fair of a question. Okay, that's a leaf too. And, uh, but look at that okay so we've got our green filled in easy 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 so to close these push from right here and pull okay and that'll click you know what let me quickly put on my stamping sleeves because i really don't want to ruin anything at this point and uh so because opening and closing the pads you can get ink on your fingers so just a quick swipe that'll take care of that so we've got that taken care of so next i'm going to use so saffron so remember we just lift that up and slide it in all right let me double check that yep that's the yellow one <laughs> i had it with the pad and then i moved the pad I went oh i hope that's the right color and so let's do the smaller flowers ah oh, pretty 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 mm -mm -mm. i'm saving the new petal pink for our larger roses, because pink roses are my favorite. All right, love lots of different flowers, but pink roses are my absolute favorite flowers. Okay, oh, and these. Here we go. And look how you can get fairly precise with a sponge dauber. Definitely easier than trying to use a stamping sponge because they're smaller. There we go. Oh, looking oh so good. And the color will lighten when we're done. So just that little push so you can pull on that lip and flip. There we go. The click isn't quite as dramatic. And so now the new petal pink. Goodness, petal pink and the soft sea foam together. Loving it. Flip and slide. Here we go. Let's double check. Yep. <laughs> Load that up. Oh, and I see I missed a leaf, but that'll be easy enough. There's still color on here. Yeah, fantastic. All right. And my sponge daubers, you know, you can dedicate one for every color, or if you're not doing that, I just go to the sink and wash them with dish soap and water. And depending on the colors, they'll stain, but if you wash them, uh, you're fine. You know, double check it before you go into your pad. You certainly don't want to compromise a pad. Look at that color. Is that not remarkable? Oh my goodness. Mm. Yeah, I did a card for stamping playground using the soft sea foam and petal pink. <gasps> they all went crazy. Me too. Just gorgeous. You know, if you really enjoy my videos, I encourage you to check out Stamping Playground. It's my membership site, and I do an exclusive video for my playground friends every week. And there's more, but of course the videos are the big highlight. And so you can check that out at www.stampingplayground.com. All right, so look. Remember that little push? I seem to need that little push. And, oh, there we go, a click. Let's wipe these off so we don't get ink on anything. And look at that. That is so pretty. And uh, so what I did was, I thought, well, let's just see how much difference does it make. So I just went ahead and put it on a piece of the soft sea foam, you know, not embossed. And then I put it on one that was embossed. Can you believe it? Look at that. This looks so flat now compared to this. Oh my gracious. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Kindness changes everything. Well, that's part of the abstract impression stamp set. So I decorated it with some of the Whisper White polka dot tool ribbon. Gorgeous. And that sweet little bow. I did use the Joy Crafts bow maker and uh, for just the perfect little bow. And I'll have a link to that. And then we have some of the Artisan's Pearls, 
gorgeous, 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 and the layering circles framelit dies. Beautiful. So, you know, it was really pretty, right? It, and the tone on tone, one of my favorite looks, but wowza, it's just almost hard to believe the difference and then i was you can see i was having a hard time trying to decide what color for my card base do i do soft sea foam do i do the petal pink and so you know you can let me know which one you prefer you know leave a comment below but look at the difference so as far as i'm concerned the big shot and um embossing mats are a must-have to use with our thinlets dies for embossing and you can die cut and emboss and make beautiful cards like this and i'll have the link to my website with this card with all the supplies and the measurements so if you'd like to make one too If you'd like more of my stamping tips, like using your thin list dies for embossing your cardstock, I invite you to subscribe to the Stampers Insider. It's your free stamping source for inspiration, information, and ideas. Just go to www.thestampersinsider.com to subscribe now. I'm Shelly Godby, teaching you how to create hand stamp smiles. Thanks for watching.